So, now I am going to discuss about probabilistic risk analysis what we understand by P R A. In P R A risk is expressed as a function of frequency or probability of an accident and the consequence of an accident. P R A for process systems use what we call as a logic tree to model the causes and consequences. Fault tree analysis F T A graphically represents the relationship of relevant causes that lead to an accident whereas, event tree analysis what we famously refer as E T A maps the probable consequences of an accident. Ladies and gentlemen in probabilistic risk analysis mainly people use commonly two type of analysis what we call as F T A or E T A. F T A represents the relationship of relevant cause that lead to an accident whereas, E T A talks about consequence of an accident and we all understand very clearly what is the difference between cause and consequence. Cause is the reason for an accident and consequence is an after effect of an accident. So, even tree talks about the after effect while the fault tree talks about the reason or the cause for such accidents. Before we look into detail the event tree analysis and fault tree analysis, let us look into few basics of P R A as such. The overall probability failure of a process actually depends on the nature of individual components interaction. We can express this as a time independent probability that is the time independent probability basically measures with the chances of occurrence of a particular outcome from a specific event which is independent of time. I can give an example the success or failure probability of an event. So, it is not calculating or estimating the failure probability within a given time frame it is trying to tell what is the success or a failure probability rate of any event which is completely time independent. We can also express time dependent probability. Now, such kind of probability failure measures the failure rate of an event the component fails after a specific period of time let us say for example, the reliability of a component during a given time period is estimated clearly in this kind of study. You have a component the component is expected to fail after a certain period of time. So, what we look at this kind of probability is that what is the reliability of the component or functioning of the component during any given period of time. So, we look for that when you look in both the cases people talk about what we call as a failure rate the failure rate can be interestingly expressed by what we call as a bathtub curve the failure rate lambda is given as a bathtub expression in terms of a time scale. Basically the failure rate actually follows a typical bathtub curve the highest failure rate exhibits for a component at infant mortality stage and at the old stage. For example, a component is just new the highest failure rate is there just before the component is being fixed or introduced in the system. Once the component starts working effectively in due course or passage of time the failure rate keeps on decreasing. After that for a specific time of effective functioning of the component the failure rate remains practically constant. Then subsequently due to malfunctioning of the component after a large elapse of time may be one year may be two years depending upon what component we are looking at the failure rate keeps on increasing with increase in time. So, this is what we call as old age wear out failure rate this is what we call as infant mortality. You can also understand this in relationship to a human life chain child can also die as an infant because of some basic premature failure during birth, but generally people take care to avoid that kind of death by giving medicines to the mother. Therefore, the failure rate with passage of time has been decreased and of course, once the child is born 
by immunizing and giving some medicines, then the child can have a very constant failure rate. As the person grows older and older, some of his body organisms may get weird out what I should say. Therefore, then after a specific period, the failure rate increases. So, it is a very common phenomena which can be also discussed with human life chain, but still we are interested in addressing the probabilistic risk analysis failure rate using what we call as a bathtub curve. On an average ladies and gentlemen, most components fail only after a certain period of time, because the components are designed initially to be very robust and rugged. As the time passes with passage of time, most of the components fail after a certain period of time. This is what we call as average failure rate lambda with units faults per time, that is what we measure lambda as. For constant failure rate, then it follows an exponential distribution which is given by this equation. The probability that component will not fail during time interval 0 comma t is what we call as r of t which is e to the power of minus lambda t. Of course, the probability of failure which will be p of t is nothing but 1 minus r of t. The failure density function is then defined as the derivative of the failure probability as given by this expression which is d p t by d t. One can also estimate what we call as mean time between failure. For example, you have got one failure, you will have the other failure. What is the mean time between such failures is nothing but 1 by lambda. Let us look at interaction of the components. Accidents in petroleum industry are usually the result of complicated interaction of number of process components. The accident is not initiated by just only one process component, it may also basically come from interaction of different process components which is a very very common phenomena for in petroleum industry which results actually in accidents in petroleum industry. The individual component failure actually causes an overall process system failure. There are two types of component interaction which are possible. One is what we call as a parallel structure another is what we call as a series structure. What is the series structure? In series all components must function for the system to perform. A system comprised with series configuration is represented usually by AND logic gate that is intersection symbol in Boolean algebra. So, for series connection P of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so on there are n components present then I can say in series structure all components must function for the system to perform. Therefore, the probability can be expressed as a given equation i pi of varying from 1 to n I simply say pi i. If you look at on the other hand the parallel structure in parallel structure or what we call as a redundant configuration at least one must function for the system to perform. Contrarily in the serial structure or series structure all have to function for the system to perform. In parallel structure at least one must function this is generally expressed with an OR gate which is indicated as union symbol in Boolean algebra. So, if you want to express the probability of failure then I can say probability of 1 OR 2 OR 3 OR 4 and so on because I must at least have one of these components in the functional order for the system to perform which is I call as probability of OR function which is given by this simple expression. If two components are A and B are connected in parallel then the overall failure probability is then expanded as simply A union B which is simply P of A that is probability of failure of A alone plus probability of failure of B alone minus probability of joint failure of A and B as well. For small failure probabilities of components P A product P B is usually neglected. Hence, in the more general form I can say P R is given by simply this equation which you saw in the previous slide as well. Now, let us look at expressing the failure phenomena for chemical process risk. If you want to do 
the probabilistic risk analysis expression for chemical process risks, then generally we go what we call as logic tree. Let us see what is a logic tree. Logic tree can be of two types, one is what we call as event tree analysis, other is what we call as fault tree analysis. Before we look at the event tree and fault tree analysis in detail with some examples, let us first try to understand some basic terminologies in logic tree analysis. What do we understand by an initiating event? An initiating event is any unwanted, unexpected or undesired event in a event tree. There are many examples, system failure is undesired, equipment failure is unwanted, but it can be unexpected, human error is undesired, but it can become unexpected, process upset that could be a toxic release, there could be a flammable release. All these are what we call as initiating event, because they are either unwanted, they are either unexpected or undesired in any given event tree. So, then what is an event? Events following the initiating event are termed as precursor events or simply as events. Initiating event is that first event which is generally considered as unwanted, unexpected or undesired. All events which is following this event are simply called as precursor events or simply as events. I can give some examples ignition, explosion, chemical release, drifting etcetera. What do we understand by outcome events? These are nothing but the possible effects, the scenarios or outcomes of an initiating event. Initiating event is that event which is undesired, which is unexpected, unwanted. However, if such event are present, then they will give an outcome, there will be a possible effect on the scenario of an initiating event. That possible outcome is what we call as an outcome event. For example, there could be a fireball, there could be a vapor cloud, there could be an explosion. All these are what we call as outcome events, which are results, effects of initiating event present in the scenario. What do we call as a top event? The top event is that unwanted event which is placed at the top of the fault tree. What is the significance of this event? The significance is this event should be further analyzed to find the basic cause for making this event as a top event. So, top events on the other hand can be considered as most critical events which should be further analyzed in detail to basically know what is the fundamental reason for such kind of initiating event to be present in the system or expected to be present in a given system. What do we understand by the term basic event? The basic causes that are not further developed or what we call as basic events. Of course, these are events which follow the initiating event, but they are not further developed actually. Such events are what we call as basic events there can be something called intermediate event. There is nothing but an event in the fault tree that can be further developed to form some basic events. So, ladies and gentlemen, initiating event is the first event which is undesired. In that initiating events there can be many, then you can identify what we call as the top event which is the most unwanted event. In that case, we must pay critical attention to that event to really find out the reason for that event to be qualified as a top event. Basic event is of course, an event following the initiating event, but they need not be or generally they are not further developed for detailed analysis. Intermediate events are in between the top and the basic event, which can be slightly enhanced, explored for further development to form basically some of the basic events. When we look at the event tree analysis, there are some important steps which I want to tell you before exactly we do an event tree analysis. This is actually an inductive procedure, it maps all possible outcome 
resulting from initiating event. The initiating event can be any accidental release of gas or occurrence of any event. For example, it could be a gas leakage, it could be an equipment failure, it could be an human error. Event tree analysis identifies all possible accidents or consequences arise from an initiating event. It identifies the design and procedural weakness. It determines the probability of various outcoming resulting from the initiating event. It looks for the final consequences of such analysis. Let me discuss very briefly in few minutes the procedure for event tree analysis. The first step is identify the initiating event. Event tree actually begins with an initiating event. The work is forwarded to its consequences. For example, the initiating event can be a leak, a gas release, a loss of a cooling water in a reactor. Followed by that is identify the safety functions. What are safety functions? Safety functions are those functions which are generally designed to mitigate the effects of failure. Generally, if there are many safety functions present in board, how do you prioritize them? How will you list them? They are listed according to the order at which they are intended to occur. For example, what is the order of a safety system which we must consider in ETA? The safety systems that automatically respond to the fault will be considered first. For example, the system can have a trip wall, it can create an auto shutdown facility. So, these are all safety systems which automatically respond to the fault. Therefore, they are prioritized and kept are considered first. Followed by that is alarm which can alert the operator. Followed by that is the operator action in response to the alarm. The operator can initiate a manual closure of a wall. He can initiate manual opening of a deluge wall for sprinkler systems to be activated. The manual operation of warning signals can also be initiated by the operator as a response to the alarm which is received. So, safety systems can be multi tire, you can arrange them in such a way that the which one has automatic response is considered to be the first in your ETA, the one which is manual is considered to be the last. In addition, you can also consider what we call as containment systems, because if such barriers or containment systems exist which can limit the effects of initiating event, then you can consider them also as a safety system, because they can also help in mitigating or controlling the accidents. For example, high reactor output temperature can be there, alarms alert operators at high temperature, the operator re establishes the cooling water flow to the reactor and automatic shutdown stops the reaction. So, this can be a barrier or a containment system, which can also be considered as one of the safety system. Thank you.